Well, good day, nations of the world. I'm Dr. Clyde Rivers. Uh, I, this is Golden Rule TV. I'm honored to, to be here with you all over the world. Hopefully this message will touch your heart. I have an amazing guest with me today. He's a, um, he's a football coach, he's an educator, and he's a great family man, Shondell Moore. We're honored to have you on our show. Thank you, Pastor Clyde, for having me. Man, what I want to talk this man and his family, I've watched him for years in my city, in Victorville, California. He, every kid he comes in contact with, they become better. He actually touches lives and he transforms life. And he is an, a world peace ambassador for us with the golden rule. Shondell, tell me your story. What put a passion in you for the young kids of the world? What, how did that happen? Honestly, I, from the beginning, I, there's always three things I always want to do in my life. One was be a husband, a father, and, an, and a football coach. And everything else that came along the line kind of fell in with it. It made, made my decisions to where I want to be a lot easier because I've always known what I wanted to do. In, in, in your life. Now, now, give me some background of your story, man, growing up. Because the heart you have for the people of the world, I've not seen it anywhere else. Well, I was born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1970, and living in the ghettos of Cleveland, Ohio, I personally went, through, went to some schools where they didn't really care for you much, and they didn't have to, because back then, you know, you were just another black kid in the ghetto, and I didn't learn how to read till I was in the seventh, grade, seventh or eighth grade when I moved to California, which is probably one of the greatest things my family ever did, not just for myself, but for all of us. I got into school. There were some, pe some teachers who decided to take interest in me. Hmm and they cared about me, something that I hadn't had earlier in my educational life. And it wasn't just me trying to just get by in school. They gave me some direction. And from there, going, on, going into high school and junior high school, I would ride the bus up and down Fair Oaks Avenue in, in Pasadena, California, and I would see 15-year-old kids and 16-year-old kids just standing around and always, wanted, always knew that the, those weren't the kids I wanted to be. So I had to make some, I had to make some honest decisions in my life to, to where I had to just grab hold to something and run with it because we didn't have a lot of great family influences. I love my mother to death, but there was a lot of things in our world that weren't great. They weren't positive. So I had to find my positivity, positivity in the things that I wanted to do, and it just made sense for me to just hold on to what I wanted inside of me. Yeah, yeah. So, man, when did you start to have a relationship with Jesus? When did, you, when did that happen? Okay, I, we, we were always raised in the church. My great-grandfather's a Baptist minister. Mm -hmm. I've always had love for Jesus. Jesus has always been in my heart. So it's always been easy for me to sit down and pray. It's always been easy for me to read the Bible and preach the word and teach the word because it's always been instilled in me. But even more so now, when I talk to people and they, and they say these amazing things to me, that I can actually feed them back to the kids that I had come in contact with. So, I mean, how are you not a statistic? You're supposed to be a statistic. Actually, yes, you could say that, but it's a choice. It's an honest choice. Sometimes you have to make a choice on what you want to be. You can sit back and allow people to tell you who you are and what you should be, or you can stand up and make a decision, your decision to be better, your decision to not want to be like, say, mom and dad are, because mom and dad don't always have the answers, and parents make mistakes. So sometimes you can just say, hey, mom and dad, I'm going I'm to go the road harder travel and take the easy way out and cop out. So me, I chose to want to be better than what I saw. That's good. One, one of the amazing things that you'll find out about this coach is every Friday night, I watch him on the sidelines. Kids are running off the field. They're coming right to him, and he's telling them exactly what they need to do, sometimes in a, a different tone of voice, sometimes encouraging. And, but, I, but I noticed one thing, that the kids, after you're done, the kids love you. Now, now I want to share something. There are some coaches that after kids are finished, they don't have good things to, to speak about the coaches. But I've watched you for years in my city. As we appointed you as a world peace ambassador, it's because I watched how you love, how, how you love everyone. Yes. You and your family, his wife is there with us. Mary, good, good to have you in the set with us today. Thank you. And I'm gonna have her on in a couple weeks. She's an amazing woman helping people of the world and, and your, your, your kids. I met your kids. You have a family. Yes. And, and the one thing that I see happening this year at Victor Valley High School is you're building a, a, 
Uh, your football team's a family. Yes. Can you explain a little bit about that? Okay, our family, our family, our football motto is family over everything. It's a, it's a choice that we're going to put this football program, this team, this band of brothers ahead of everything, ahead of your girlfriends, ahead of your friends outside of football, and make this our family unit. Because a lot of these young men don't have family units. And as a coach, you have to be a father, a mentor, a brother, an uncle. It just depends on what the situation calls for. Because a lot of these young men need you to be the, just that in their lives. They don't need another guy beating up on them, picking on them. You have to yell at them. You have to be stern. But you have to also let them know that you love them. And I honestly love every, each and every last one of my players. And, they'll, and each and every last one of them will tell you, Coach Moore loves me. And if he says he loves me, I know he loves me. Yeah, man, I put a picture of Coach Moore on my Facebook page. I had 100 hits from young kids. That's Coach Moore. So, so, so I know what you're doing, what you're living in their life is real. Yes. And, and, and tell me about uh, the Act Golden Rule. There's a program you, that you're working on implementing at the school you work at now. What is that program? Okay, what we're implementing right now is kids taking the go living, the go living by the golden rule, treating others the way they want to be treated. And just, just our last honoree, De DeMaurier, DeMaurier Jones, and we honored him because he's a student athlete whose life is not perfect. You know, he's a kid who has to stay with different friends during the week just to get to school. But he's a 4.0 student. Wow. He's always in class. He's a captain of a football team. And you never see this kid without a smile. You, never, you would never know this kid is not at home. You would never know this kid is not wow. you know, getting everything that he needs from home because he doesn't show that. And he treats every kid that he comes in contact, every staff that he comes in contact with, like with the utmost respect because that's what he wants. So that's what he gives back. So we, we're honoring students, trying to get kids to live the golden rule, trying to get kids to understand that there's more. We're not judging kids by the package because they're, not every kid is wearing what they want to be wearing. They're not, they don't have on the mask they want to have on. They're not the people who they want to be, but they're the people who are, they have to be just to get to school every day. Wow, wow. One of, the, one of the amazing things that I really enjoy about you is you have a positive attitude on the next generation. When I travel the world, people are saying, our kids are losing it, they're this, but when, when, I, when I see you, man, and the kids, your eyes light up, man, and, and, and there's something about that the reason why I wanted you on this show was because of that. So, so, so give me, uh, what do you feel about our, our kids and the, the future of the world? What, what, are you, uh, what are your thoughts on that? If you ask me, the future of the world are in great hands. The first thing we can't do is give up on these kids because not all these kids have the right mentorship, the right leadership. They need people to give them direction and most of them want direction. And once we start casting them aside and giving up on them, we never know what their gift to the world might be. We might be giving up on the next Michael Michelangelo. Hmm. We might be giving up hmm. on the next leader, future leader of the world, because he or she doesn't fit the criteria of what the world is looking for. So when we start casting them aside and giving up on them, we, in turn, are giving up on ourselves. Because hmm. sooner or later, these people are going to be expected to lead this country. These people are going to be expected to take care Skate of us. Coach. So why should we give up on them? Why, why shouldn't we lead them and get them past this rough patch in their lives so we can understand what their gifts for this world is? Coach, what inspired you to become an educator of all things? And, and I want to hear a little bit about your athletic career. Because look at him, you don't look like him and not have been an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your, your athletic career and then what pushed you towards education? Okay, what pushed me towards education was a hard hit in football. <laughs> That's all it took to make me realize that I was gonna, never going to go pro. I was going to be a better coach and a teacher than I would ever be a better pro football player. Because at, at 15 years old, I stopped getting taller. I started getting wider, started getting thicker. You know, I, the speed was there, but kids around, around the country were still growing. And it took one hard hit to rattle my brain to make me realize that I better get smarter. My body's not going to take the power of me. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what it took to lead me in this direction. I'll, and it was the right choice for me. I didn't, have to, I, didn't, hmm. I didn't have to take a lot of hard hits. I didn't have to take a lot of abuse for me to realize that, hey, this guy over here is a whole lot better than me, and he still has a, he's still growing. <laughs> well, co coach, the, the one thing I can say is every program you go to, 
turns into a winner. Now, now watch. Kids come from the same culture, but there, there's something in you that turns these kids into something. And that, that to me, as, as I challenge you, I just came back from, from like Chicago, Illinois last night, and they had major shootings this weekend. And, and, and I'm in a situation where with kids have no hope. So I'm really inspired today for, for, for a gentleman that's bringing hope to a lost generation. And as I state on every single show, we have the answer for the entire world. If everyone does one thing, just one thing, not two, not three, we can solve every issue in the world if people choose one thing. Treat others the way you want to be treated. That's a game changer for the entire world. So on this show, I've committed my life to actually bringing in people that are, that are changing the world. And at times, these people are not heroes that you would look at, but they're heroes every day. And I think we have to rebrand a brand new hero in the world today. A hero is not just someone that can run, jump, and, and catch a ball, but a true hero is someone that puts his life on the line to preserve others. And this is why this great man, a coach, an educator, and a family man. And watch this here. Uh, I'm going to have him explain to you how, how have you reached all those goals that you've set, you've obtained every one of them. What was that process like? That was, that was a rigorous, a long process. Because going along the line, I was, I was a young father. I was a single father at the age of 19. So what I had to do was reach down deep inside to make a choice. Am I going to let my son be my excuse? Mm. Or, am I, or is he going to be a reason for me to succeed? Mm. So I chose to make it a reason for me to succeed. And along the line, I met some amazing people who inspired me to succeed, who inspired me to want to be better and inspired me to want to be the man I want to be. And one of the greatest statements I ever, had, ever heard was from a college professor named Dr. Gruber. He told me it was never too late to be who I was supposed to be. And in the time I met my amazing wife, and my amazing wife have, have never given up on me. She has told me, go back to school, get your education, and do the things you want to do. You don't want to grow old laboring. You don't want to grow old with a broke down body. Touch the people you're supposed to touch and get involved with where you're supposed to be. And she's always, she's been a driving force in me. Wow, wow. And, 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 and your, your, your family, what's that, uh, how has your family, how they inspired you to, to, to do what you're doing now? The one thing I've always wanted to do was be a great father. I wanted to be the father that I didn't have or the father that I didn't know. And my kids, I, I thank God every day for my kids, for my wife, because my kids make me want to get up early in the morning, go to the gym, get to work, give everything, everything that I have during that day's work, come home, hang out with them, get back up and do it all again because they're worth it. They're, hmm. they, they see me do what I do, helps them do what they do. So it, it gives them reason. If my dad can get up at 3.30 in the morning, head out to the gym, go work a full day, come home, hang out with us, have a good time, and still do it again the next day, I can do anything I want to do. Wow, 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 wow. Guys, this is a real inspiring story because, you see, we don't hear many stories like this. We hear on the news all, all of the things that are bad, the things that are not right with the world. So when you find someone that is doing right, I want to pick his brain. Audience all over the world, I want you to hear. Uh, now, now if you, tell me, how do you goal set? What, do you, what is your process in, in actually goal setting? And then how do you reach your goals? Because it's one thing, people talk about a lot of things, but they don't achieve. Yes. And, and see, you have achieved all of your goals. When did you become a teacher? Recently, how huh? You became a yes. teacher. Yes, recently I became a teacher. I became a teacher three years ago. You know, I, I, my education process took me a long time. I've been in education for 12 years, but I became a teacher 10 year, three years ago. But my, my goal setting, I, I try to aim high. So if I, if I set a goal high and I miss, mm. I've achieved a lot. Mm. I haven't settled. So I, I, it's like I tell my students and my kids, aim high. So if you aim high but you miss that goal, imagine what you've co accomplished in between here and there. Wait, hang on. Did you hear that, people? This man said, aim high. So in other words, you have never gone for the bar. No. You've gone for beyond the bar. Exactly. 
And if you miss it, you're at the bar. I'm at the bar or above. Yeah, that, 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 I love that. Is, is that what you're teaching the kids? And that's what I teach my kids. That's what I teach my kids, my kids, my students. And I can tell everybody, I got 120 sons. Every year I get 120 sons to hang out with. I get 120 son nephews to hang out with. And you know what? I want to say something. One time I was running through the airport going to Africa, and I saw this man in Denver, Colorado, going to a football camp, and, and that was when I started watching yes. you. Because I noticed the, the, the high school you were teaching at then, or you were coaching at, man, it turned out winners. They turned out champions every year. And it was something that, that you guys did as a coaching staff that was amazing. You would, you would play the, the most difficult teams in the preseason. Uh -huh. the, the, the fastest teams, and the score would be 61 to like 10. Yeah. But the, the mentality of losing didn't get in, in your kids. It didn't stick. And when it came time for the league, we they there. always won. Yeah. So wait, wait, so can you tell me how you start out, plan the best, and you would lose, but that mentality wouldn't get in the kids. Okay, we, we start out, we started out and we told our kids from the beginning, you're not allowed to take responsibility for any losses. Those losses are ours. Mm. You're not allowed that you cannot carry the weight of any loss. You're responsible for every win. If someone has anything negative to say, you can go home and blame it on your coaches. We'll take that. We'll take that all day. You're not allowed to take any responsibility for any losses. And that allows kids to play free. That, that gives kids an understanding that I'm going to go out and I'm going to give 110% because at the end of the day, win or lose or draw, my coaches are going to have my back. My coaches are going to stand there and say, hey, the loss is on me. We're not going to blame Johnny. We're not going to blame Jimmy. We're going to take the blame ourselves because we didn't have you prepared to play the Sarahs, to play the top teams in the country, to play champions, state champions coming from a small school, a small town. We're going to take that loss. And with that weight off, you can do anything you want to do. Did you hear that, people? So, so, so what a different philosophy. That just empowers kids to win. Yes. So we come out to, because I, 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 and then there's other schools in our region mm -hmm. that would start out losing and would lose everything. And I kept saying, how can you, so that was, that's the secret. That's the secret. They're not, they don't have, they don't take responsibility for any loss. You know, and, and they don't, they don't fear losing. So they play free. They play with the understanding that there's a purpose behind everything. And we would play, we, we went 0-6 in our preseason. Come back, we dominate our league by an average of 51 points. Take that 4-6 and six league, run right to semifinals. That to me, uh, please, people listening around the world, understand what he says. Kids of the world, there's hope for you. We, we, have, we have nothing but hope for you. But don't fear losing. You know, one of the things that I see as I travel around the world, people are afraid to, to, to lose, so, so, they, so they quit trying. So they quit trying, yeah. Have, have, you, have you seen that, Coach? Yeah, we, you, see that, you see that in everyday life. You know, we tell kids, don't be afraid to fail. Why are you afraid to fail? You sit back afraid to fail, you forget how to succeed. You stop trying. Wait, 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 Coach, can, can you please say that again? Okay, if you're afraid to fail, you forget how to succeed. You stop Shh. trying. You stop, you stop believing that you have a purpose. You stop believing that you're here for a reason. Because you're so afraid of failure that you sit back timid. You forget to get out there and step out into the world and show them what you're here for. I'm here for, I'm here for a reason. There's a purpose that I'm here. And everyone should understand my purpose. My purpose is for greatness. All, we tell our kids, everybody should strive for greatness. Understand something, you have greatness in you. And if you're shooting for greatness, good will be there. But greatness is attainable. You, well, Coach, you're seven and one. Yes. At at, at Victor Valley High School, <laughs> we, that right there is Jesus moving. <laughs> we haven't been seven and one, and that's my alma mater. We haven't been seven and one ever, almost. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching, and and this again, everywhere you go, winning follows. So so anyone around the world, if you want this man to come and speak. At any, at any event you have as a motivational speaker, I, I recommend him highly because hear this, what he does is working. He's winning. He's winning, his teams win. And one of the things I can tell you is when you have young kids from broken families, messed up cultures, when they encourage you and love you, 
That is a big, huge deal. Coach, what are your parting words for the audience today? My parting word for the audience is don't give up on the kids. Trust that, they're, that they will become the people that they're supposed to be. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be 10 years from now. But sooner or later, if you continue to help them and encourage them, they'll get to where they're supposed to be. Because honestly, we don't know. There's no manual to life. There's no book that tells us we can do everything we're supposed to do. Heck, as parents, we understand that. There's no manual to parenting. So how is there a manual to life? There's none. So we got to take it one day at a time. Don't give up on these kids. See, and that's a key thing he said. So the manual, the, the actual gift within the individual needs friction, needs love, it needs trials, it needs struggles, it needs everything. And in the midst of all those things, you will form something, something great. Uh, Coach, I'm just encouraged by, 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 by what you do. And, and uh, uh, as we close, tell me how your faith plays a role in what you're doing. How is, how is your faith, what, what type of compass is that for you? My faith, my faith is, one of my, is my, part of my driving force. I'm up every morning, I pray every morning. Before I leave, I pray over my family. I pray over my friends. I pray over my, pr my players. I pray, over, I pray that the world will start seeing things the way I see them. So mm -hmm. my faith leads me to believe that that's a possible, that that can happen. So that's why I, can, I, I can't give up on that. Because if I give up on that, I'm giving up on my faith. And I refuse to give up on my faith. My faith drives me. Man, 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 and I see it. And when you talk, I hear it, man. There's a, <laughs> there's a, there's a passion within you for, 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 for what you're doing. People around the world, please. Uh, all the reports around the world are looking negative now. I totally disagree with, with those reports. If we start doing one thing, if we can treat others how we want to be treated, and there's more good taking place in the world than evil. Sometimes people focus on the evil. I focus on the good. So what I want to say is this. Never get stuck in a negative story because there's 80 positive ones outside of it. And don't forget this. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Thank you for the Golden Rule TV show. I'm, I'm Dr. Clyde Rivers. Coach Moore, thank you so much for being a guest on this show. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm glad we got a chance to talk. And it's been amazing. And I will see you again on this show. As often as you like. Thank you, everyone, and God bless all.